Love is all you need. 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 Love is all. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. I, ha I have to say, though, I mean, I, I listen to that song, and I, I know the truth of that. That really is the heart of our, our message here at Unity and the heart of Austin in so many ways. But I, I confess that when I hear that song, I just feel like I need a kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> Probably don't. Love is really all you need, but it just kind of feels like a kazoo would be really nice. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take you a second and uh, have you just imagine something with me. So just take a second and feel free to either close your eyes or just work in your imagination. So imagine for a moment a time before your birth when you were wandering the heaven as a disincarnate soul. You were immersed in the beauty and peaceful harmony of paradise when a call went out for volunteers to incarnate in bodily human form. A small blue planet in the far reaches of the Milky Way galaxy was experiencing a crisis and was in need of souls who were willing to incarnate in a human body to help out in Earth's time of need. And you made the decision to volunteer. You next met the incarnate, Incarnation Committee to discuss with its members the part you wanted to play and the work that you wanted to do. You made a covenant at that time to do the work you agreed to do. But there was a catch. Not only were you to serve, you were also required to grow. It was your job to increase the intensity of your light, to grow in wisdom and in stature as well as to serve. You next had to make a series of decisions that would perfectly situate you be of maximum service and to develop a custom designed learning curriculum for your soul to assure its maximum learning potential. You had to decide what particular set of gifts, talents, and abilities you wish to bring with you to contribute to life on earth and to the human family. The dreams and aspirations that would lead you to your destiny to fulfill your earthly covenant. A date of birth determining an astrological configuration that would give you clues to your soul's earthly purpose and, and, and destiny. A place on earth, a climate zone, a region in which you reside, a racial and ethnic form that, you would, enable, that would enable you to best express yourself. A socioeconomic class that would provide you with the challenges and benefits you need in order to learn and serve. A spiritual tradition with its particular set of rituals and practices that would support you. A gender with its attendant opportunities and challenges. A particular set of parents that would provide you with their particular strengths, with qualities that you could draw upon, with a, a designed set of difficulties that you would experience with them in order to learn and grow, to prepare you for the service that you are to perform. Your siblings and your relationship to them in age, plus the companionship and the conflicts with them that would provide you with important lessons and resources. And finally, a name for yourself. Once these decisions were made, you were free to incarnate and begin your earthly mission, forgetting all that went on before. But with time, you would slowly but surely begin to rediscover why you are here and how wisely you chose, because every factor in your life was perfectly positioned and has perfectly positioned you 
for the service you are to perform and has maximized your potential for learning and growing. So just take a nice deep breath now. This guided imagery is actually from the, the opening and from the, uh, the dedication of the, the book, The Eye of the Storm, and it was originally developed by Dr. Carol Woolman. And uh, the, uh, the writer says that I, I often use this with executives, professionals, because it really, she says, where it really helps them to ask the, the big questions. Where did I come from? And what am I supposed to be doing here? These are important questions, and they're significant questions. And in this eye of the storm, I'm convinced that Gary Simmons has really captured an essence of what each and every one of us ultimately is here to do and be. Because each and every one of us is ultimately here to do and be you, because everybody else is already taken. But being the most amazing and wonderful and significant you that is within you and is at the essence of who and what you are. And it's to wake us up to that greater knowing of who and what we truly are. When one is asleep or only dimly aware of his or her purpose and direction, conflicts are natural. And paradoxes, they're not as apparent as they become uh, with a greater understanding of what our purpose truly is and our own personal identity of who we are as unique spiritual beings in the world. And so we're always in experiences that are calling us to remember who and what we are. You see, we are created in the image and after the likeness of the divine. We are created in the image and after the likeness of the creator. So what does that make us? How can you be something other than a creator yourself? How can you be something other than the creative energy and power of the universe expressing in such a beautiful and unique way as you? Each and every one of us has been brought into this incarnation for the purpose of expressing these amazing qualities and also to grow through these amazing difficulties and challenges that we are experiencing in life. Part of our work is to really wake up to the understanding that everything that is going on in your life and everyone that you draw into your experience is here for a divine purpose. And I'm going to kind of emphasize, he didn't say it quite this way, but I'm going to say especially those that push your buttons. And the, the, the essence of this lesson is that ultimately no one is against you. As much as we want to try and make them that way. Ultimately, no one is against you. Because everyone that comes into your energy field, everyone that comes into your awareness, everyone that comes into your uh, um, knowledge or, yes, just simply consciousness in some way, is drawn there because there's some purpose that it, that person, that circumstance, that situation is trying to fulfill and help us to live even more of the amazing qualities and characteristics that we have decided and chosen to come in this world to live. You see, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, right? I know you have heard that before. Ultimately, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We're also a human beings having a spiritual experience. We just don't recognize it a lot of times. Because we're still stuck in this idea that somehow that we're just simply human beings. But the truth is that we are not just human beings. There's no such thing as a just, just a human being. Every one of us 
is created with amazing, unique, divine qualities. And our work in unfolding that is to really wake up to those things that are enhancing our ability and drawing forth the qualities and characteristics of the divine into these circumstances and situations and to show up in all of the different circumstances and situations with the possibility that there is a, a higher vibration, a higher awareness, a higher energy, a higher path that we can take than perhaps we did the last seven or eight, ten, ten, twelve lifetimes or, or even this lifetime. You know how we tend to go through life experiences? Anybody go through an experience that you seems like uh, deja vu all over again? You know? You know what I'm talking about? Well, Deja Vu All Over Again is a wonderful, wonderful uh, school. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's, it's really, uh, they, it's just ha- having these same kind of experiences over and over again are there to kind of help us that realize that we don't necessarily have to keep going through all these same experiences over again. But they're gonna, we're going to continue to go through these experiences all over again until we're able to clarify what it is that we are here to bring to that circumstance, situation, or other person for that matter. You see, um, people come into our lives for one of two reasons. They come into our lives to either give or receive. I'm, actually, I'm going to suggest they come into our lives for both purposes, both to give and to receive. People come into our experience and our awareness whether we like them or not, whether we don't like them or not, whether we love them or not, whether we don't love them or not. They're here to show us who and what we (coughs) truly are. And what we have a tendency to do is to show up just like them. Or we try to be opposite them, and by trying to be opposite of them, we actually show up just like them. (laughs) Sound familiar? So we tend to resist how other people are and you know, when someone else is being a jerk, we wind up reacting in the same kind of jerky way that they do. We try to meet the same energy with the same kind of energy. And, the, and, and whenever we try to meet the same kind of energy with the same kind of energy, we create this kind of vortex. Gary Simmons, the author of The Eye of the Storm, Embracing Conflict, Creating Peace, gives the image of a storm. And the image that he gives is that of a hurricane. And it's really kind of, I uh, have to say that I had no awareness there was going to be a hurricane out in the Gulf. And so I just want to certainly hold an awareness of, of love and light for those who have experienced the pain of that. But when we try to have the same kind of energy wrestling with the same kind of energy, what we're doing is we're creating, we're participating in creating a storm in life. And in creating the storm in life, we are using the energies of challenge, of difficulty, of conflict, of resistance. And those are what's really creating all of the swirling drama and pain and suffering and all of the stuff that we really would like to get rid of. And so we use the energy of resistance to try and get rid of all of this, and that same energy is what really is what's causing it in the first place. And so part of our learning, part of our growth, is to recognize that even in the middle of all of this, there is an I. So let me ask you a question. How many of you ever had problems in your life? What? Oh, we're unity people. We don't have problems, right? <laughs> Wrong. So let me ask you a, a, a really powerful question that I'm going to ask you to ask yourself. Who is always present every time you have a problem? Me. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> How is it that everybody else is to blame, but you're the one that always shows up when there's a problem in your life? So what I want to suggest to you is 
when you answer that question, listen not just for me, but listen to the question, who am I? So when there's a problem that shows up and you recognize that you're the one that always shows up in the problem, you're always there. When I ask the question, who is always present? How would you answer that other than saying me? True. And what's another way of saying me? I am. I am. And there's a presence and there's a power and there's an understanding that is at the heart of those words. I am. Moses, when he was in the desert and faced the burning bush, asked, who shall I say sent me? And the answer was, I am that I am. Say that I am sent you. And that I am is your oneness with the creative power and force of the universe. In unity, we call that the Christ within. You see, each and every one of us has within us the same understanding, creative power, creative energy that Jesus himself demonstrated in life. And that is the I am consciousness. So the beautiful thing is, uh, another question I can I, I ask you is, when you are having a life is really good and things are flowing for you and things are, uh, you know, you're happy and things are, who is always present in those moments? I am. And the question really is, the, the challenge we have the thing that we're learning is how do I recognize when I am in that place that is the I in the middle of all of this resistance, in the middle of all this conflict, in the middle of all of these challenges, in the middle of all that stuff that comes up for us that we wrestle with and we push against and we fight with and we say and we blame. Don't we? Don't you know? <laughs> it's important you know to recognize. And so it's important to recognize that when we are here, we are here to reconnect with that place within us that is the essence of our being, the essence of our wholeness, the essence of our truth. That's what this whole course and this lesson really is about. It is really about helping us to reconnect with a knowing that we are always, in every circumstance, in every situation, still connected to the I am. And that's that eye of the storm. Now one of the things Gary points out in, in, in this work, this is a work that, that is, uh, the lesson, my talk is really just kind of inspired by this whole series of lessons and it really, uh, there's such a depth to this work that it really uh, would be better to and honestly be taught in a class and it probably will be at some point. So I encourage all of you to join me in a class later on when I begin to offer this. But I want to kind of give some some awarenesses, but how we can really live life from the place of an understanding that the circumstances and situations and experiences and people that are in our life are there for a divine purpose. And yes, even the ones that we don't really like very much. And part of that divine purpose is to help us and remind us that there's something that is being called forth. There's some quality or characteristic that we have cut ourselves off from. That we have somehow felt a sense of loss or lack or, or limitation or separation from that divine source. Otherwise, we wouldn't see this as a problem. The truth of the matter is when we're in those circumstances where there's challenges, conflicts, when, when someone is really pushing our buttons, if we didn't have a button, there wouldn't be any button to be pushed and we wouldn't actually. And so part of the purpose of each and every circumstance like this is to show us our buttons, to show us our hooks. Tim Children calls them, you know, he's got a great series of lessons called Don't Bite the Hook. When you find yourself going through life experiences, believe me, there are circumstances that are there for the purpose of getting us to bite the hook, 
to get hooked into the drama, to get hooked into the, the swirl of the storm. How many of you have bought the hook? Maybe this week, maybe today, maybe just a few, me, me talking, you know. <laughs> it's, it's so easy, uh, and we've been programmed to really bite that hook that gets us caught up into the stories. And so one of the things that's important for us to begin to recognize is that everything that comes into our life comes into our life for a higher purpose. And if we begin to ask the question, what is in this for me? And what is in this from me? Then we can begin to open our, Gary, uh, Gary Simmons calls them a, a werapi. We can have a little bit of a werapi. We all need a lot more awareapy. That's aware therapy, if you didn't catch that. We need to be more conscious and aware of what is going on and how are we interpreting life's events, how are we interpreting life experiences, how are we interpreting the people in our lives, how are we putting meaning onto those that show up in our lives, and how are we putting meaning onto their actions and behaviors, and how are we putting meaning and significance on how, what they're doing and not doing, what they're saying and not saying, how they're being and how they're not being? Because we give it the meaning that is there for us. It may be something totally different for them. You know, someone may be trying to back into a parking spot and, you know, someone c cuts them off. You know, not that it ever happens to anybody here, of course, but... And so we can look at that saying, why those people are just so awful because they do such things. Or we can say, oh, they must not have understood that that was my desire intention. And they may not have a, a same kind of perception that I had that that was my parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> we got some laughter going on here. This, I overheard a conversation this morning. <laughs> But it wasn't, you know, the beautiful thing was I saw that they did not see that as something that was against them. It was just an experience that they had, and they were able to move past it. And so that's part of our understanding work is that we make meaning. We're a meaning-making vehicle. And everything that we experience in life, we give an interpretation to. And we're living life not based upon what actually is, but based upon our interpretation of what is. And if we don't change the interpretation, we're going to continue to live that same kind of interpretation over and over again in these different experiences in life. And that's where we experience all of the conflict and the challenge and the swirl and the destruction in life and relationships and health and, and even in our finances and our our work experiences. And so one of the questions we want to ask ourselves is, what am I making this mean to me? A lot of our homework for this week is really asking the big questions. Can it be really true, can it really be true that nothing and no one is against me? And how can that be true? That's another piece of the question. How can it be true that this person is really not against me. The situation is really not against me. And the only way it can be true is it, is it is trying to call out that which we think is missing. We think something is missing in that circumstance or situation. And we think that by getting that other person to be the way we think they're supposed to be, then no longer that will, will, it'll no longer be missing, you know. But one of the things that came to me in my meditation about this this morning is the moment that we make someone out here responsible for the problem that is showing up in us and in our understanding and in our awareness and in our experience, the moment we make them responsible, we have automatically made them responsible for our happiness, our well-being, and our peace of mind. Is it true? 
It means that we have to get them to show up the way we think they're supposed to be in order for us to be happy and healthy and well and prosperous. And, and they, we have basically, I'm going to say it, we have basically made an idol or a god of the other. And the moment that we do that, the moment we make somebody else, we point the finger and say, you're to blame for my unhappiness, my health, my, my frustration, my resentment, my anger, whatever negative you want to interpret that with, the moment we do that, we've automatically made them responsible for our happiness, for our love, for our well-being. And I would suggest to you that that's part of their job is to show up and show us how we're doing that. Does that make sense? People are showing up in our experience in our life to show us where we are playing that game. And they will keep showing up as long as we choose to play that game. And until we recognize and begin to move back into the eye of the storm, the I am, to begin to move back into the place where we are the creative force of the universe. And we, are, we have the opportunity to create something different in a different way, a different view, a different possibility. When we're open to doing that, we are the light of the world. And that's what we're here to do. And that's what we're here to be. That's my lesson for this week and probably the rest of my life. <laughs> so I'm going to invite you to really take some time this week to really reflect on these questions. How is it possible that no one and nothing truly is against me? And what meaning am I making of this experience? That's our homework. All right, let's, shall we move into our meditation time? Wow. When love overflows, you can only let go and be swept out to sea. This journey will end where it started, my friend. In the heart's mystery When you let go of fear The truth will appear So simple and clear When you let go of fear The truth will appear So simple and clear Take a deep breath now. As you breathe in and out, just be open to knowing and seeing and feeling an awareness, a realization that ultimately the entire universe is here for you. And we're here to experience the wholeness of this truth. And the truth is, there really is only one presence and one power at work in all aspects of your life. And so just relax into the safety and the security and the willingness to trust and let go. And this presence and power lives in you as the Spirit of God, the I Am. And it is the reason that no one or nothing truly can be against you. And so take 
this opportunity to realize this claim of your divine inheritance. And that you are not only a beloved creation of God, but you are an extension of that creative power and force. And you return to that place within you that is beyond the swirling of the challenges, the difficulties, the conflicts, the fears, the doubts, the beliefs in lack or limitation, all of the perceptions that something is missing. And breathe into an understanding and a knowing that that which seems missing is truly already inside of you, seeking to pour forth as strength, as understanding, as courage, as love, as light, as acceptance, as peace, as power, as imagination and creative understanding and creative awarenesses and ideas. And so relaxing into that center, we trust and know nothing and no one can be against me. And so we accept the gifts that they are calling forth. We accept the gifts of strength and courage and light. And we make our path and our life about proving this understanding of living from this place Thank you. Thank you, thank you, blessed spirit, that you are always here in me and with me and for me in all the circumstances of life. And so it is. Take a nice deep breath. Breathing into the heart space. Take one more nice deep breath. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes and be present here and now. And so it is.